Hi, this is Loïc Bayard from Color GoPro and welcome to this quick tips tutorial on Autopano Video 3 and the new D-Warp feature. AV3 now offers you the opportunity to choose between three different modes for the D-Warp function. Each of those has its specificity. But first let's understand what D-Warp is exactly and how it works. So until now, Autopano relied on a template-based stitching solution. The software found control points in the images, used this information and the lens preset to compute a distortion and a position for the images composing your 360 video. So this is an efficient way of working, but it also means that there were parallax issues to deal with that required a lot of manual adjustment. Dwarp solves this by looking at what happens in the overlapping areas between the cameras and distorting the images to match their content. The different modes rely on three different ways the software compute these informations. So to put it very simply, when AV3 warps one specific frame, it looks at the ones before and after to make sure there is a consistency in the way the images are distorted. This group of images we look at is called a time window. This prevents having too much of a wobbling effect in the stitch lines. When you use prioritized space, the time window is composed of five frames, and the overlap between different time windows is just one frame. The stitch in this overlap frame weighs in on the next time window, ensuring there is a consistency in the way two consecutive time windows are stitched. But this also means that this overlap frame has to be computed twice. If you select prioritize time, the time window gets bigger. It looks at 30 frames each time and the overlap is now 10 frames. This means that the warp will be more consistent throughout the footage and will be less prone to have some wobble in more complex cases. The amount of images to analyze for each stitch computed is however much bigger, so this setting takes a lot longer. Finally, the still setting will grab 5 frames in your selected area and try to solve parallax issues in those using a single solution. This means it works great for static images, but it can leave a few errors in videos with movements in the stitch lines. So how do you actually use the feature? Well, it's pretty straightforward. Start by importing the footage the exact same way you would usually. These can be videos shot with three or more cameras of any type. Then go through the usual workflow of Autopano Video. If you have questions regarding this workflow, you can check out our full workflow tutorial series on our YouTube channel. So stitch, refine the control points and compute the stabilization if needed, harmonize the colors and prepare your horizon. It's important to understand that the warp will achieve the best results if it starts from a very good stitch. When using the GoPro Omni, you can also compute the rolling shutter compensation at the same time as you compute the stabilization. But do note that this will make the warp calculations and the rendering time significantly longer, so use it with care. Finally, once you have prepared your footage, select the D-Warp tab and choose the most appropriate mode for your shot. Space for a shot with a lot of movements from the cameras that you want to adjust to quickly. Time for a complex shot with movements you don't necessarily want to take into account. For example, if the rig is mounted into a car, you want the warp to stitch the inside of the car, but not to adapt too much to what's happening outside. And still for a static shot. Let the software do its magic and render the results the usual way. And that's pretty much it for this quick tutorial on Urpano Video 3 and the D-Warp function. Don't forget to subscribe to catch new tutorials and 360 content from Color GoPro. Yeah.